I was talking about drive the company truck like it's your own. Drive the company truck like it's your own. The way you handle that truck, the way you handle that job, your job performance, your work ethic. But right now we're talking about how you're dealing with the truck. And for one, you're developing a good habit in case you get your own truck, but it's just the right attitude anyway. What am I talking about? Well, what triggered this particular video is we're here, been here about an hour, a little more than an hour, because the guys was on lunch when we got here. And me and another guy, it feels great out here in Georgia. It feels great out here in Georgia. But um, this guy that was, that's was that been beside me waiting, he's been idling his truck the whole time. And I can't figure out, like, is he using the air or is he using the heat? Because you don't need either one. So maybe he, he is using either one and just got the truck idling. But you see what I'm saying? You're just wasting fuel for no reason. And so far, it's been about an hour and a half, just wasting fuel for no reason. And so a lot of people will say, well, it ain't mine, don't worry about it. It's not mine, why should I care? That's the wrong attitude to have. I played ping pong, um, and I remember being in a place, this happened more than once, but one time in particular, was in the billiards, and the guy, every time he messed up a shot, he boom, hitting the table with the paddle. You know, I don't know if you're familiar with the paddle, no, I don't have one. But it's a wooden wooden paddle in the middle, the rubber blades on the outside. He hitting the table with the paddle, it chips the table when you do that. And anybody knows this happens because you can see chips on tables when you play sometimes. This, this table already has a, a couple of chips on it. And it's a new table. They just replaced the table. I'm like, hey man, I'm not playing. I'm on the side waiting for my turn. I'm like, hey man, that's a bad habit to hit the table with the paddle because you're gonna damage the table. And he's like, I don't care, it ain't my table. I'm like, well, that's also a bad attitude to have about it because you're using the table you're playing on the table and if it was the table was chipped up then we're going to be complaining including you about the table being chipped up and raggedy so you know you got to think about it that way when when you're looking at how you um taking care of the equipment that guy just staring at me you're like man it's not your table why are you worrying about it i'm like i, I just I just explained it. You don't, you don't, you don't get it. Take care of the stuff that you're using. We're using it. This guy, I thought I was gonna have to slap him, man. He's just staring, <laughs> and then he got uh, rolled his eyes and go back to playing. And another guy, guy did cosign, but the guy went back to playing, and uh, he made an effort. You can tell, you know, it's not a switch. If that's your habit, it's not a switch. You can cut off, but he he hit it a few more times, much lighter. I guess he's trying to catch himself after the after he had launched, you know. But that's why it's a great attitude to have to be mindful of how you um, handle stuff. Just because it's not yours, you know, you, you don't have this. Just like people throwing stuff out when they park, throwing pee out the window in bottles and trash on the ground where they park at, and then complain about it being no parking. I'm going to fly my town. Look at this mess that some clown threw out here on the ground. No, nah, but... See what I'm saying? So it's all the same ha habit. As far as taking care of the truck like it's your own, you know, at the end of the day, it helps you out. Having some tools, some minor tools, a ratchet set, wrench set, alley wrench, electrical tape, vice grips. Uh, let's say the, the handle where you release the fifth wheel won't stay out and you got to drop the trailer which they probably do you know do whatever you got to do not drop the trailer but something as simple as that well vice grips can help you out because you can lock that bar the pull bar back and keep going take it to the shop when it's convenient but if you don't have the vice grips you can still wedge something in there remember that but you know a new a new person don't know that don't or might not think about that critical thinking can but you know so some uh, some tools could help you out is you a lot quicker to 
put in a bar of yourself or or put some bolts in to hold something together or whatever with your small tool set instead of waiting hours to get into the shop. And that could be the difference between you getting another load for that day or for that week or, or sitting around in the shop for hours at a time. You know, in addition to saving the company money, but it saves time and could also come back around to help you make more money. I mean, it's just a good, the right, the right attitude is to take care of stuff that you're using, whether it's yours or not, you know, uh, go to a room or somebody's house, you leave, let the lights stay on. I was at the pilot at the 71 in Salisbury. The water's turned off, but the water still, I mean, it's more than a trickle still coming out. And I tell the people, I might be out of room on this car. Keep stop recording by itself. I'm like, yes, it's turned off, but it's still coming out. And so she was kind of like very dismissive of it. Like, all right, well, whatever. And I was like, well, it would make sense if you guys, you know, if it's scheduled to be fixed, but it really doesn't make sense if you guys know about it and nothing is scheduled to be done about it, and then it's just gonna be running forever, that that, that would be ridiculous. So um, that's why I'm just letting you know about it. I'm like, who is the manager? <laughs> I'm like, who is the manager? And she told me who the manager was. This very same pilot, again, I mean, uh, another time, I stopped there to get air and I asked her, was the air working? She's like, yeah, there's nothing wrong with the air. I said, okay, well, that's why I figured I'd ask. Um, I tried two and they are not working. And she said, um, well, they're working. You, you know, I don't, I don't know what you did wrong. Make, make sure you turn the lever. I said, like, I tried all that. And then uh, I said, I'll tell you what, uh, let me, where's the manager? Let me ask the manager about it. I said, I was wondering if you knew that the air, whether the air was working or not. She's like, yeah, the air is working. I was like, okay. That was a, I, that's what I was afraid of. I'm like, I want to inform you that the air is not working. She, she's like, the air is working. I'm like, no ma'am. I'm telling you that the air is not working. And uh, so that's how that went down, you know. Then she went and talked to a maintenance guy, whatever, to find out that the uh, compressor was not working sad man kind of like not related as much that's to go back to communication within the organization but <laughs> yeah that, uh, that that doesn't fit with this video at all except to say that people don't care about how they do their jobs in many cases and you should because it helps you on the end now I have bothered two people that particular day to ask them about the air or ask inform them about the air where they could have been doing their jobs without being bothered had uh, the sign been up saying air doesn't work or, or at least the first person knowing that the air didn't work and so when a customer asks to say the compressors don't work but instead they have to be enlightened by the customer that's crazy but anyway I got to go.